The 75,000 people in the stadium's seats took a collective breath, and silence settled over the arena as the video of Landry faded with the last notes of the legacy. Nikki's eyes filled with tears, but she held them back, closing her lids to capture them. Then thundering feet, hands, and voices filled the air, chanting Landry's name, chanting for all of them. Remorse filled her, self-hatred, disgust. She could never fix it. She could never make it right, but she could be here to honor Landry every day. She could help Paisley accomplish the dreams the two sisters had built together. Nikki left her guitar by the drum kit and joined the bandmates at the front of the stage. She locked hands with Adria, and they all took a bow before walking off stage. The crowd went wild. As soon as they were out of sight, the five of them formed a circle, hugging each other and holding on tight. They used to do something similar before each performance to help Paisley with her stage fright. But these days, she battled it differently. With Jonas, who was part of their tour management duo and her boyfriend. Now he was the first of the small group of men waiting in the wings to step forward, swallowing them with his muscled arms and joining their circle. When they broke apart, they all wiped their eyes, and Paisley fell into Jonas. He dwarfed her, making her look even smaller than her barely five feet. He had almost thirteen inches on her and doubled in her width. As tiny as she was, Paisley's personality was huge these days, strong and vibrant. She'd stepped into Landry's missing shoes, filling them in a way Nikki didn't think her sister could ever have imagined. As Jonas's hair slipped over his brows, he pushed it back to reveal bright green eyes that settled on Paisley. He brushed aside her straight black strands and kissed her forehead before linking their fingers together. Adria threw an arm over Nikki's shoulders. While each of them was hot and sweaty from the performance, banging on the drums worked Adria out more than any of them, so her black hair was practically adhered to her face and neck. They're cute together, Adria said with her bright blue-eyed gaze on Paisley and Jonas. I used to worry they'd hurt each other all over again, but... I guess I understand second chance love better these days, her friend replied with a shrug as her eyes landed on another man who'd been waiting for them. Ronan was wearing faded designer jeans and an old school Goonies t-shirt that made him look more like the film director he once was rather than the president of a production studio he'd become. His cinnamon-colored hair with its thick waves was brushed back carefully. His beard was trimmed neat and his gray eyes were glued to Adria. Nikki chuckled but didn't respond. She was laughing on the outside while deep inside her, the little girl she'd once been was throwing a tantrum aching for the love all her friends had found but had eluded her. The way the men in her friends' lives looked at them like they were the only thing worth living for. She wanted that. She'd wanted it from the time she'd watched her very first fairy tale, but her fairy tale dreams had cost them everything. It had cost them Landry. She certainly didn't deserve a happily ever after story, not when Landry would have never had one. Forever after wouldn't be hers. She could barely allow herself moments of pleasure and peace these days without the guilt tearing her apart. Want to go out tonight? Adria asked. I heard the Pygmalion has a great house band and even better bar food. Instead of an after-party full of media and important guests, they'd held the VIP gathering before the concert today. The two-night stand in Dublin was the last of their concerts in the calendar year. Tomorrow, everyone was heading off in different directions for the holidays. The fact they were going to be apart for a few weeks wasn't the reason Adria was asking her to go out, though. This was her friend keeping the promise she'd made in November, to not leave Nikki without a wing woman just because the entire band now had a man to go home with at the end of the day. Nah, Nikki replied. I want to be sure I'm packed and ready to go for our early flight. Besides, I think your man might literally explode if he doesn't have you in his arms in the next ten seconds. Adria snorted. Ronan will survive. Nikki turned laughing eyes to her friend. But will you? 